What's up everybody and welcome to a tutorial series with Nevs and this time we're going to be playing through Prison Architect. Uh, this is a new game that is in early alpha. Well, not really early alpha. It's been around for about a year, I would say. Um, they recently got up to alpha build 22, but in this game you build and manage a prison. Um, now, I don't normally recommend early access games. I'm not really a big fan of the concept, but this is one of those few and rare times that I will recommend it. I like the developers. I like what they're doing. Uh, they release monthly updates to the game, and I wanted to make a series kind of explaining the basics of building a prison in this game. Um, because one of the things the game is kind of lacking at the moment is a clear design or a clear tutorial of how to lay out a prison and how to do everything. They have a very basic tutorial, but it leaves a lot out. So we're going to start up with a new prison. There's a few options here and I'll go through them. Uh, we're going to build a small prison today, um, but they have varying sizes that you can go through. So the fog of war, the fog of war means that if you do not have a police officer stationed inside of one of the buildings and you have uh, prisoners in there, they could cause problems and you won't be able to see what's going on. Um, so we're going to turn that off for the purposes of the series. Uh, continuous intake is something I usually leave off uh, because leaving it on will make the game incredibly hectic. Um, but basically every 24 hours you will receive new prisoners. Um, which I believe the number is also based on the size that you pick. I can't confirm that, but a lot of the times I receive eight prisoners every 24 hours for a small and somewhere up around 15 uh, when I build a large. Um, they, you can also set to generate forests, which will generate random trees around the map, uh, but we're going to turn that off. Uh, generating lakes is in the same vein as forests. When you start up a map, uh, there will be lakes scattered around the map, in various locations. We're going to leave that off. Same with buildings. Um, it will have a bunch of vacant buildings already built on your plot of land that you can use or tear down, um, but we're going to leave that off as well. So we're just going to have a really basic map with nothing too special going on. Just going to be nice flat terrain to work with. Uh, failure conditions is something that was recently added, um, and it means that if there are too many riots or you go into bankruptcy or there are too many deaths or escapes in your prison, um, then you will fail. Uh, we're going to turn that off as well. So we're just going to basically disable all of these options for now because I just want to be able to show you guys all the features currently in the game. So let's get started. If you guys are at all a fan of building and management games, kind of like Roller Coaster Tycoon, um, I think you will like this game quite a bit. It's definitely one of the best building and management games that I have ever played, and it's only an alpha. So here are our workers, and our workers, uh, the more we have of them, the quicker we'll be able to build foundations and structures and objects and so forth. The delivery area here is where items will be set down when they're delivered on the truck. Anything that you build, whether it be a uh, object, well, I think objects are really the only thing, or materials, I guess, when you want to lay down flooring and walls, those will also be delivered. So all this gets put here. One thing I like to do is go into rooms where you get to designate what type of uh, room is in the area that you select. Because as you can see here, we've got deliveries and garbage. Um, so we're going to extend the deliveries area a little bit. I like to make sure it's nice and wide um, so we can have lots of deliveries sitting here at one time. Because sometimes I like to rip up parts and move them around and such. Our guys are getting everything off the truck and this is where it will all sit. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and this is very important, so take note, is that when you lay down an object, say if I put a sofa there, which I'm not going to do, um, and then decide I don't want the sofa there and quickly delete it, you have still purchased the item. You still lose money for that, and the item will still be delivered. However, it will just sit in this area until you place that item somewhere else. So what you really want to do is go into planning. Planning allows you to decide what your layout is going to be before you actually place anything. So we're going to build a path that goes all the way across. And we're going to start by building some offices uh, for our staff members. Now an office has to be 4x4. Four four. Where are you office? There you are. 
So we have to have a 4x4 four four minimum size. We have to have an office desk. We have to have a chair, a filing cabinet, and it has to be indoors. So I'm going to start off by planning out that exact layout. So we're just going to start here at the end of the garbage. We're going to extend it all the way out. And I'm going to put a little 4x4 four four in here, which is made up of objects, so we can denote exactly what we're looking at. So there's where one office is going to be. So I'm going to make another one here. Lay down some more walls. Let's just go ahead and extend the wall down. So another 4x4. Four four. I like to go ahead and plan some of the stuff out ahead of time, uh, because as you go through the game, you're going to need to expand everything that you have. Actually, let's move this down just a bit. I probably should have started from this end. There we go. I've gotten fairly fast at doing this. I've been playing this game a whole lot on my own. Whoops. Okay, let's go back in here and let's extend the garbage just a little bit to fill this in. Make it aesthetically pleasing. Alright, so let's go ahead and lay down a foundation. Oh, this is new. I didn't even notice that they had added in two different kinds of foundation. I'm not sure how long that's been there, but I never noticed it. Ah, I see. Okay, so apparently we cannot build on this last piece. So we're just going to have to build it as I had it before. So that is where our foundation is going to go. You have to lay down foundation before you can build rooms. And in doing so, in order to complete it, you also have to put a door so that people can get inside of the foundation. So, we'll leave a little bit of room here for fencing, and we will put our door right there. This is where our offices will be placed. Another thing you want to do is go in here to your reports. And this is where lots of the game is spent. Um, basically flipping through tabs and selecting various things, which I'll get into later. Um, but for now, we want to go into prisoners, and this is where we can turn on what type of risk factor we want our prisoners to be. Uh, low risk will not cause a lot of trouble. Normal is just kind of the standard prisoner, and high risk is going to be very violent and is going to lash out and cause trouble in your prison. Um, and you also get money based on how many prisoners you have in your prison on a daily basis. And it also reflects the risk, so the high risk prisoners are the most... Uh, valuable prisoners um, but we're just going to turn that off for now so that we don't have any prisoner intake so that we can build our structure and then we can start bringing in the prisoners that we need so I'm going to go ahead and let these guys keep doing their thing uh, grants are another important thing basically the government will give us some money in order to do something so for this one we have to build a basic detention center with some of the necessities that we're going to need so we'll go ahead and hit that. We get a $20,000 advance payment, and we get a $10,000 completion bonus. Also, Administrative Center, which is what we're working on, which includes building two offices, hiring a warden, unlocking finance, and hiring an accountant, which we will get into. Okay, so here's our basic foundation. So let's go ahead and lay down a little bit of brick. Lay that all the way across. And since I've had things kind of off a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and build one square higher. That one can just stay as is. Doesn't matter if you build the office too big, but you don't want to build it too small. There are no bonuses to building larger offices, however, so I would not build them larger than the minimum requirement. Whoa. It is freaking out, man. Sorry about that. I think I hit my Windows key. There we go. Now I can't hit my Windows key. Okay, so one thing we're going to need is a door into these rooms. So we'll just build a staff door so no one else but the staff can get inside. Put this guy right there. Keep it kind of uniform, looking nice. We got some guys stuck in here. They can't get out. There we go. Got some basic office rooms. So one thing we're going to want to build 
for these rooms is to make sure we put the objects that are required in order to make the room the one we want. Which includes building an office desk. I don't think it matters which way you actually orient it, but I like to make it look good. It may very well at some point. So we're going to throw in a chair. And we also need a filing cabinet, which is right here. As I said before, having a search function to get through these items might be really nice and very simple to implement, I would think. What do I know? I'm not a developer. So we'll go ahead and get rid of the planning. Just erase all of it. Perfect. Okay, so something else we're also going to need is make sure we have electric and uh, water. Or electricity and water, rather. So... In order to do that, we need a power station and we need a water pump station. But let's also make sure that we lay out exactly what we're going to do with them. I like to put them right up over here. However, I don't know how wide it really needs to be. You want to leave probably two squares in between, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So probably right about there. And we're going to want a water pump as well, so let's leave an extra gap there. Well, looks like I guessed pretty well what was supposed to go there. Perfect. It's beautiful. Alright, so we want to leave two squares all the way around the generator. Water pump, it doesn't really matter. And in doing this, let's go ahead and build a fence, which is in the materials. Nice thing about fences is they don't cost anything. So we're just going to build fences all the way around this. The fences may cost something later on. I don't think it makes a lot of sense for a fence not to cost anything. Um, but for now, we don't have to worry about that. And this will keep the prisoners away. Go ahead and build a staff door there. All right, so now our staff can get out. And from there, we've got to start laying down some piping. So in order to get power to these rooms, as you can see, there's a little lightning bolt, which means we don't have power. So we need to extend this all the way down here and probably out into this room so we can make sure we have power. And this little gauge here next to it indicates how much power is being used. Um, so when it gets to the top, that means you're gonna trip the breaker and all the power is gonna go down and you're going to have to go in here and manually set it. Um, now for some reason, starting the game, we get a capacitor and capacitors allow you to increase the amount that can be used by this. As you can see, that's how much power it's using. But if we lay down a capacitor right next to it it means it will extend it and it'll be able to use more there you go see that bar indicates how many capacitors we have and you can put them on every adjacent spot around the power station now we also need to give power to our water pump but we're not going to do anything with the water pump just yet Let's go ahead and hire some staff. Actually, before we do that, we need to go in here and make sure we set the room type. Uh, we put everything in it, but we haven't actually set it up. So if you go to office, you can drag across and it will set all these to offices. And now you can see all the requirements have been met and they are official offices. Let's go ahead and drop a warden inside of one because he requires an office, as you can see. We're also going to want an accountant. So let's go ahead into the bureaucracy tab, which allows you to unlock new things and new features. Now we're gonna unlock finance. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and hit health and security. Uh, those are pretty essential ones to have. And once that's done researching, we can lay our accountant down and finish 
uh, the requirement for that. Now let's start building some of the other aspects of our prison. We're gonna need our planning tool, trying to decide exactly what we should build. So let's get the holding cell up. Now the holding cell is where they will put prisoners who currently don't have a cell. Um, this will be the first thing you'd want to build if you were having continuous intake set on. Uh, reason being is because you're gonna start getting prisoners way before you're actually going to have a cell to put them in. And a holding cell is just one gigantic cell for every prisoner, basically. Uh, but since we don't have continuous intake on, it's not quite as important, so I'm not going to build it real big. And I think I'll actually put it on this side. Let's see what the minimum size for it needs to be. 5x5, five five, has to be enclosed, has to be indoors, and it has to have a toilet and a bench. Actually, let's do the planning first. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. So something like that should work. Let's leave a little bit of room in case uh, we need to get by. So something like that should work. And we're gonna want a door, of course. Our door will go somewhere right about here. We'll put a double door. And we'll have a toilet or something over here. Have some benches across. And we might actually put a couple of beds in here just in case. So that should be sufficient. Let's go ahead and lay that down. Let's do a concrete build. Uh, I don't believe there's actually a difference between brick and concrete other than aesthetic looks. As far as I know could potentially be a difference. So let's go ahead and build a double jail door. You have to have a guard nearby in order to open these as well, so we're gonna go ahead and hire our first two guards in order to meet that requirement. Awesome. Since we don't have any prisoners, I believe all the jail doors will stay open until we get our first prisoner in the door. Let's go ahead and extend a little bit of power to it. There they go. Working away. Not sure how that guy stands inside the wall, but apparently they can do that in this game. All right, so we have, well, we don't have financing yet. Still waiting on that. Ah, apparently we can only unlock one thing at a time. All right, well, I'll go ahead and tick the health again once we've finished. But that is a number one priority there. Perimeter walls are incredibly expensive, so I may upgrade to those later, but another essential thing you really want to do is make sure you build a fence all the way around. We're going to go ahead and set a fence like that, and we're going to build a fence that goes all the way around the perimeter. And this way, our prisoners will not easily escape. And since it doesn't cost any money, there's no real reason not to do it. We'll go ahead and let them get started on that. We're not really in any kind of a hurry. Go ahead and put a fence there. Sometimes the doors will get messed up if you don't put the land all the way down first, the wall, um, and then putting the gate on top of the wall. I find it works a lot better that way. Let's go ahead and denote this as our holding cell. We're gonna need to put a, ta or a bench in here, which is located right here. Put the bench there, and we'll put a bench back here. And we're gonna put some toilets. Alright, that'll do. You know, we're also gonna need that door. Put a small cell door. Another thing you might want to invest in is a metal detector, which I'll get to later. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and throw one down. Yeah, they're still going around building this fence. It takes a little while to get that done. And 
Let's see what else we are going to need. Pretty much does it for that room. Next room is going to be a shower. Shower does not require anything other than a shower head, uh, which it will tell you in here. Yep, just shower head. The problem with my showers in the past is that they tended to not be big enough. I kept having to expand them, so we'll build a fairly sizable shower for all of our prisoners. And I think I'll put it over here in this corner. Start with just something really big, and then I'll shrink it down. All right, so we'll have faucets going all the way around. We'll have doors here. And I'll also have some extra walls going out like this. And with those, we'll be able to build more shower heads on them. Just go ahead and extend it all the way. We'll delete these. And if you guys don't know what I mean, I'll show you in just a second. Yeah, I'll keep it like that. Oh, excuse me. Got to give a little bit of power here to the metal detector. We're going to need some water over here for the toilets. Now, the water pumps are a little bit different. You have a large pipe. Um, the large pipe carries large amounts of water around the prison. The small pipes will take very small amounts of water around the prison. So let's go ahead and extend out from here. Extend it out to about here. I'm gonna build it down here. And we'll line it up with the path. Extend the water out that way. Sometimes these little pumps don't build quite right. I think it's a bug still in the game. Um, but then again, with the Alpha 22, they may have fixed that problem. So there we go. We have power to our toilets, or water to our toilets, and power to our room. So that will work perfectly. Now we need to finish our shower. Or we need to build it, rather. We haven't even started on it. Go ahead and lay that down. Be the foundation for our shower room. 